Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, welcome. It's so good to see both of you. You too. You too. Yeah, it's been a minute. Um, I'm excited to to hear what's going on, to catch up a little bit, um, and to kind of continue down the path of of awareness and um, and more. So. Cool. Um, yeah, why don't I'm actually going to have you guys introduce yourself. Can you give like a little 30 seconds um, who you are and and then we'll get into the project that you're working on. So, Chris, why don't you go first? Sure. Uh, my name is Chris Thomas. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles and moved to the Bay Area because I felt that a lot of the people who I resonated with moved up here. I think there's a lot of seekers up here. Um, and uh, had the opportunity of being around on the planet for a little while. So I've done a lot of different things, worked in the nonprofit field, uh, was an academic for a while, very into environmental issues and energy issues and sustainability issues, and always been very, very interested in sustainability issues. Um, and I met Dan and found some creative juju with him and became a storyteller. And that's how I got to this place right here. Oh, I'm also married with two kids, which is a very important part of my life. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Dan. Cool. My name's Dan Damon. Um, I grew up in Wisconsin, uh, the youngest of five, five kids, excuse me, and uh, in a pretty creative family. So um, I was always into film and um, comedy and things like that. So I knew kind of at a pretty young age that I wanted to do something with comedy. So I ended up being part of a group that was at Second City in Chicago for a little while. And then, um, so I commuted from Madison down, down there every weekend. And then, um, and then wanted to go somewhere else and try to explore it more. So I had a friend who was moving out to the West Coast and specifically San Francisco. And I was like, yeah, why not? It's probably like LA. And uh, it wasn't like LA, <laughs> but uh, I but fell in love with the city and really loved the city. and. Um, I uh, got into an internship that was dealing with film and that kind of was the spark for me to uh, jump into editing. So I've uh, been an editor. It's kind of the thing that I do to stay alive these days is is edit. And so I've been doing that for the last 20 years or so, 25 years. And yeah, so now jumping into about 10 years ago, I jumped in more directing. So I'm trying to get my hands in everything. And Chris is my partner in crime and all that stuff. So Wonderful. Um, so I'd love to share how we all connected for the first time, which is through your Yogi trademark, uh, film and project. And, um, I met, you know, both of you through, through Edie and her campaign to highlight awareness and bring in practitioners that are, um, speaking in that space. And you guys interviewed me, which was so cool and such a fun highlight for me really, because, some, that's something I've been championing for for many years in different ways and as a coach and healer that that continues and now it's it's taking different forms which is really fun but let's talk more about that project and um I loved so much the the concept and the message because it really resonates with me I'm a you know 20 year yogi I'm a yoga teacher so I'm I'm always going deeper I, I teach an ancient form of yoga in fact that's um really potent and it's not for everyone because <laughs> uh, I want to go beyond just the superficial. So I love the the message of, you know, authenticity. That's that resonates so deeply. Um, so for e for both of you, I'd love to hear an update on on that project. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe a, if you don't mind, I'll start like just do kind of an overview of the whole project and then jump into kind of the update. Okay, so Sounds the good. idea the idea came uh, a long time ago when Chris and I were doing some political work and we were looking for our next thing. And I was in a coffee shop and I saw this little ad for a retreat that was like an embrace your light retreat. That was a three day yoga retreat and uh, meditation retreat, and uh, it was trademarked. And I, I sat there with it, and I was like, "Trademark, like come and come to my retreat and do yoga and meditate, but don't steal my name, or I'll have my lawyers come after you." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, there's some comedy there." So, um, so we started working on that. Chris was like, "Yeah, let's do it." So we, you know, started doing a lot of research that we usually do before our projects, and um, started taking classes, started reading up on script writing, doing all that stuff, and 
ended up writing a script for it. Um, and then uh, we were awarded a, a residency at the SF Film, which is now S SF Film, was Film Society then, but SF Film now, where we continued to, to like hone our skills with writing. And, uh, and then we had the opportunity to do a short film as, as essentially a proof of concept or a, as prep for doing a, the longer version. So we did that. It got in some really great higher level uh, festivals, which was really awesome um, and such a great experience. And then uh, did some more rewrites and then more recently uh, brought on Edi Okamoto to help us start our social media presence and, and campaigns around the film. Um, and then even more recently added a uh, talented and really respected uh, producer who's helping us uh, and guiding us to to production hopefully in 2023 so that's kind of wow cool. yeah super exciting yeah cool anything to add okay um yeah as far as the status of the project i think i think Dan, think Danny you, you mind right? muting sorry <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> oh he's trying to mute me <laughs> that's okay it's taking space as far as the status of the project i think dan really summed it up well i think this last iteration we we aren't in la as dan said and um making a movie up here in the bay area feels like a different experience um and we've been you know first we had the fantasy that we're just gonna oh this is a great idea it's just gonna happen and after several years of of working we met some producers like oh actually to make your first film you got to just go make your first film and uh, so we were, you know, going for like more of a lower budget type of a thing. And then we met this producer in LA who was like, well, I think, I think, you know, you could, you could up the stakes here. Uh, and so now we've been working with him and it's been really a great experience to go back through the script with, mm -hmm. with his input and, and like, okay, you know, what's a shooting day going to look like? Um, hey, if you want to get an A-level list actor, you know, can we lower the number of days he's going to be there or she's going to be there? Anyway, so it's just been this last iteration is like, oh, okay, it's it's uh, feeling uh, very more real and present and, and real exciting. Yeah, I love it. So what is the ultimate goal? Like, what's the mission with this film right now? Shall I go, Dan, or? Ah, uh, you're Hi. muted. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, the, I think the first goal is to entertain uh, because, you know, what we've discovered is making a film is almost like making a beautiful art piece mm. and that you can spend a lot of time and make a gorgeous art piece and it can cost a lot of money and resources and you might never make that money back. Now with a film, you have the opportunity actually to make your money back and possibly make money. So first and foremost, we want to entertain. But if we were just going to entertain, that wouldn't be the goal. We do want to educate. And we want to, as we kind of say, we want to, for those people who are like experiencing a journey through self-awareness, we want to keep that spark going and um, give them more juice to, to go further. And then for folks who are like, I don't know what the self-awareness is, we want to light that spark. Um, and we feel that we need to do that as a nation, as a planet, you know, our population's exploding exponentially still. We gotta gotta figure some things out as a species. And so we wanna add to that conversation with this film. Yeah, I mean, I think that's well said. I mean, there's not a whole lot I can add to that, except for I think that, um, you know, we're not trying to preach anything. We're just trying to share and connect our own uh, life experiences with people um, and, you know, we're, we're both in therapy. We're, we're both, you know, you know, stay up till three in the morning or four in the morning, having interesting conversations type people. And, and, uh, uh, it, it's such a big platform to be able to, uh, you know, and a frightening platform because you, you're trying to be as vulnerable as possible, you know, putting your yourself out there in these characters as much as you can. And, mm -hmm. and but I think it's a, we see it as a really rewarding thing too. So it's exciting. So I, I think that's a big part of it too, is, you know, expressing our vulnerability in it. 
I love that. Yeah, vulnerability is always challenging. I don't think it gets easier, but it definitely becomes more of a practice and a skill and a muscle that we can that we can share more and more. If you want to expand on that, I'd love to hear like, what are you working on now? What does awareness look like for you right now? Uh, let's see. So um, I'm really into this kind of like the self regulate thing right now. Like kids are, I see kids as like being super aware, but not having the ability to like self monitor, you know? Mm. So the idea for me is like trying to get to that state with an idea of instead of self-regulating or like, you know, in a way that's negative, like trying to be positive around it. So I'm, I'm looking at how, and I was talking to Chris about this yesterday about like the idea of uh, internal awareness versus external awareness, like how, how mm. I'm talking to myself and like treating myself internally and, and, you know, the things that I'm trying to avoid internally versus how I'm being seen and, and acting in groups mm. externally, yeah. whether I'm taking, you know, the, the air out of the room based on me trying to protect myself, thinking that I'm worthy or, you know, so that people will like me or, you know, defending whether I'm wrong or not, you know, things like that. And I think it's like at a certain point, I think it's become easier for me to once I really consciously intentionally practice that stuff to not be uh, so scared of it and not be so feel so wrong, I guess, in a lot of it. So Damn, that's look deep. at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love thank you for sharing. That's that's sure. incredible. It's cool to I hear like I even envision like your brain going down these different pathways and making choices and deciding like a choose your own adventure feel is how it feels. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, would, I would add real quick to that is that like yeah. sometimes a, a thing that I've been saying lately in the last couple of years or whatever, and Chris knows this too, is you can't edit a blank page. So I, I do think that like you have to step into the pool, you know, and it's scary to step into the pool, but you know, you gotta, you gotta put stuff on paper so that people can tell you it can help you change it. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. And so brave. Thank you for sharing. That's I love hearing that. Sure. Chris, what about you? Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I have a, a, a major milestone coming up in a couple of days. I'm going to be 60. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for with all respect to people who are over 60 or like, ah, oh, you're young. And people who are younger 60 and like, ah, quit talking about how old you are. You know, it's <laughs> 60 is a number. It's like, eh, it's, it feels like it, it's a more significant, it feels like a more significant one. To that number. Um, and, and I feel what I'm trying to do in a lot of my work is, is feeling okay with uncomfortableness. Mm. I think when I was young, happiness felt to me like having my options open. I could do all these things and mortality is, a good teacher of saying, hey, you're not gonna have time to do those things. And is that really a good formula for happiness? Ah. And so where I am right now is I'm trying to be more comfortable with being uncomfortable. And a, a big part of that practice is frankly, is in my relationship with my wife. Um, and, you know, like any young couple, <laughs> with any, any couple with young kids, <laughs> there, <laughs> you can be a lot. young couple too. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, <laughs> um, there can be a lot of conflict. I'm reading this wonderful book, and and uh, it's, um, Ellen Nagoski. Um, and it's called uh, "Come as You Are," and mm -hmm. she talks about feelings of your partner are like a hedgehog and they're sitting on a chair and you see the hedgehog and you know what do you want to do and the first thing you want to do is name it you know and then and then you maybe want to sit next to it you know and then maybe you want to hold it and you know you don't want to just react to it and then the quills are going to happen and you're going to get hurt you mm -hmm. know and i think uh for me that's an uncomfortable place recognizing the hedgehog holding giving space to that without reacting is a practice mm -hmm. for me Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's where I'm right now is like being okay with that uncomfortableness. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, 
I just want to reflect back what I heard from both of you is this really um, beautiful awareness of the inside versus the outside and how they're connecting or correlating or 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 something of that nature. Does that resonate when I say that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was saying this with Chris yesterday, like I, I do feel like I, I mostly live in the external, mm. get, which I think relates to our character because she's always searching for, you know, external admiration and, and I find a lot through my life I've, I've done that you know I've, I've done a lot of that so yeah I think we all have I think that's how we're how we come in to be honest is like to be recognized externally through whatever we define success as through money relationship big mm -hmm. house like more 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 at least in America and <laughs> So it is, it is definitely a shift of uh, the paradigm shift to go inside first and to even connect all those dots. Hmm. Chris, what were you going to say? No, nothing. I'm just agreeing. Yeah. yeah. And we're, we're the youngest of our family too. So I, I wonder if that plays, it must play a role in it. Yeah. I'm the youngest as well. Okay. <laughs> There's always, I've noticed, you know, I call family like the first university. It's like where we get so many lessons forever. Right. And um, I notice that there's typically one person that's like leading the charge into a more expanded consciousness in most families. Um, so it sounds like maybe you guys are that person <laughs> in your families. <laughs> I was certainly waving the flag for attention. <laughs> oh, there you go yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's funny i actually um i was with my mom and she was telling me that she you know doctor mandated she had to eat healthier and i remember like something came out of my mouth that i've been saying to her for like 15 years just like a repetitive phrase i'm like yeah you should not you should be eating more vegetables i forget exactly what it was but it was showing me how how like I am that presence for for them. I am that teacher for the people in my family is to to be healthier through food. <laughs> Great. Nice. Yeah. Well, awesome. Um, I do want to ask, you know, we talked about awareness showing up in your life. Um, tell me more about the character in your film and um, how is awareness showing up in her life? Dan, you feel any? You want to go? Either you, way. You can go ahead. Well, our, our main character's name is Joe, and um, she grew up on a commune, um, uh, mainly to a single mom. And then um, as she grew older, she really didn't like the foo foo woo stuff of a, of a commune. So she kind of went the other way and turned into kind of, type, kind of a type A type of character. And we find her in the story where she is a single mom <clears throat> with a young uh, girl, young daughter and she separated from her husband um <clears throat> and uh well they are divorced they're not they're not together um and they're trying to figure out how to co-parent she's an amateur journalist she is the kind of person who just she's trying to find that success like you talked about you know if i could have some success that's defined by our culture that will make me happy yeah and so she's looking for that and she tries to like you know be a be a, a olympic skater you know, she tries to, um, she's going to be the best uh, sandwich maker that Subway Sandwiches has ever seen. Like she's just going to do something great. And she gets this opportunity to go undercover to a yoga retreat. And she's like, and she does not like this guy who's the guru of the yoga retreat. And so she's, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to pretend that I'm doing the foo foo woo woo stuff, but I'm going to expose this guy. But then she gets pretty good at yoga. And it kind of goes to her head and she, she becomes like this. It's this is where the interesting part of like she's learning the wonderful skills of self-awareness with yoga, but she's also kicking ass at it, you know, <laughs> and she could be like an awesome yogi. And so it's playing with that competitive nature that uh, look for uh, uh, external um, admiration that, that, you know, of course, this is anything we do in the United States. And it's just even more funny that it's with yoga. So that's kind of a, <laughs> I love that part because I've been that person with like, I'm going to do this pose, watch this, yeah. you know, and yeah. then it becomes that 
you know, we're talking about this internal, external kind of mer integration and merging. Yeah. Where it's like, no, I'm having my own experience now. I'm elevating in different ways. It's not competitive. So that's that's funny. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I'd say where she is and with self-awareness is this character. I mean, she's a character, right? It's a caricature. So she really just has no idea about self-awareness. Yeah. Uh, and then through the film, she's like, oh, I can be a changeable person? Like, that's amazing. And frankly, that happened to me at a very late age, so. I was gonna ask, it feels, yeah, I felt that. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, talk more about that, Joe. I mean, Chris. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fun writing a story, especially with a, with a good friend who's a partner, like, which, how much of Joe is me? How much Joe is Dan? How much right. is Joe is I you put, That's not me. I thought you put that on me. <laughs> like, not me at all. Okay, is that yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's actually some. Now we're parts back to the you or or your name on the screen. Anyway. <laughs> we'll have we'll have some things in the script where it's like left in there. It's like Dan wanted it in there, so I'm gonna keep it. And I was like, Dan, what about this line? It's like I thought you put that in there. It's like no, I thought you wanted it in there. So we have to <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I'm the youngest in my family as well. <clears throat> uh, of what I thought were a lot of overachievers in the family, mm. and uh, thought I was doing pretty well. I thought I didn't really have any issues. <laughs> um and then the fourth That's serious decide. the fourth <laughs> serious relationship i had my partner who i was having another you know emotional breakup with is like you need some help pal like <laughs> you you think you don't hurt people and you're a great person but you've hurt some people you know and you know the three or four people that you've hurt and uh in the meantime, I had a boss who was very into therapy and I didn't, wasn't going to go to therapy, you know, it's, it's for people who are broken. Uh, and then I mm -hmm. started going to therapy at 35, around there, 35, 40. And I was like, and I had a friend who was on a path to be a Buddhist uh, master. And I was like, it, I was blown away. I was like, this is so interesting to like yeah. work with someone and in a, in a vein where you get to learn about who you are, you know, and possibly change that. Exciting. So that happened to me in my late thirties, probably. Beautiful. What a, what a beautiful process. And Dan, <laughs> um, <laughs> any of you in that character? No, I'm Papa in this scenario. <laughs> no. Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, I, I think that was one of the beauties of uh, writing with somebody else too, is that we get to check each other, you know, and like, is that really how, is that really what would happen? Is that like, is that true? Is that true in your experience and things like that? So I think that, you know, while it's, you know, if, if one of us wrote this script and didn't have each other as a partner, this movie probably would have been made a long time ago, but, mm -hmm. but having a, having a partner and writing, person to check and go hey is this true is this real like that it's yeah. but it's become a better movie i think and more realistic um experience wise so i think that like that's really awesome uh yeah i mean i i, I think that like you know i come back to the self-monitoring thing i think that that our character doesn't really have the, the ability to self-monitor until later in the film and um is always wants to be the best at the new thing that she does so that she can be called the best at it you know and 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 get that admiration and stuff so you know at the end she she's in therapy you know she's she's not she doesn't have her thoughts in a silo and uh i think that's you know whether it's a therapist or good friends and or whatever i think that like putting your thoughts outside your head as much as possible is beneficial for you to create better modeling for your kids or have better relationships with your partner or friends and um and hopefully you know have a more real authentic honest rest of your life you know um because yeah i mean we we suppress a lot of stuff and um you know i've been reading this guy rick hansen a little bit and he you know he talks about how there's this idea that all of it's bad stuff you know, which I is a really interesting is was caught me because I was like going to therapy and and looking at all the stuff that you suppress isn't all bad stuff. It can be love that you didn't get, you know, and then all of a sudden you're getting love instead of something else, you know. So it's like you can find positive things in therapy and in self awareness that isn't bad or negative. And I I think that that's I think that's something that 
our character finds too towards the end. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not all bad vulnerability, you know, ickiness. It's also like, oh, I'm going to be closer to my daughter. You know? Yeah. So. I love that. Yeah. I think like you said, Chris, you know, there's this notion that if we go to therapy, it means we're broken or something's wrong with us. But the reality is we all have challenges that we came in with. That's like, I think still a misconception, right? So yeah. if we accept that and we decide to do something about it with the help of others, cause you know, it's hard to, to you get stuck in a loop if you're just doing things by yourself and you don't put out thoughts or the words or, um, I think that's a really good point to bring in is, you know, we're, we're all able to do this work when we have outside help because we need that reflection back and then we work in on the inner and then we're whole. We're whole as we are, but we're always getting better. We're always challenging ourselves to do better. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I, I do think that like the idea of uh, how we're perceived, like we're, we're not capable of seeing ourselves in real time. And I think that's a real fault you know, for us to become better people. Hmm. So, uh, you know, back with the whole, like, you know, just cause you think it doesn't mean it's true kind of stuff. It's like, you know, it's just good to have somebody reflect back what you're, who you are. Yeah. I think we all need that too, to your point about like highlighting the good and the strengths and the, par the parts of us that are really valuable and, and we want to continue with. Mm -hmm. It's nice when someone tells you, wow, you did such a great job. I see, I see you. I honor you. I value you. Yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Chris, we used to have the, this thing where it's like, you know, tell people when they're doing something right and tell them when they're doing something wrong. Almost how do you, how do you learn as a person and how do you feel supported? You know? Totally. You hear the dogs barking, which makes me think about like, I've trained my puppy and I've trained mm -hmm. children, trained children, and I've trained adults. <laughs> and we <laughs> all respond to the <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I said, like for the circus? <laughs> for for living in our circus of the planet, yes. Yes. Nice. <laughs> and we all respond to the same things, and that's positive reinforcement. If I tell a client to reward themselves after they hit a big milestone or even a small milestone, it creates that feedback loop, and then they want to do it again. And then the hard stuff becomes easier. And you know, dogs are really responsive to that with food. I give you a treat when you sit, you're gonna continue doing it. So it's, I think that's like a secret tool that I would love everyone to know because it's so effective and it's so easy. You know, we all respond to positive stuff. Yeah. 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 The, the Rick Hansen, the thing that I was reading, he's, he's talks about the, that we're a bundle of our habits, you know, and that's mm -hmm. a hard thing to break. Yeah. It's like trying to, trying to, to make new habits, you know, which it, is it's hard. Challenging. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Chris, you look like you had a, a good thought coming in. <laughs> uh, well, I, you know, you asked what we're working on. Another thing that I feel I'm trying to be pretty present with right now is um, the uh, the critic, the inner critic, you know, the voice that's um, oh, yeah. uh, saying I could do better. You could be doing better. You could do better. You'd be doing better. Um, and um, I'm trying to change my relationship to that voice. Um, you know, of, um, but there's another quote from this book that I'm, that I'm yeah. very into right now, where it's just about, you know, if we can, um, that voice is there for a reason and it helps us to achieve something, it helps us give a place to go to be a better person. But if we can change our relationship with that voice and put it in the place where, you know, it doesn't have that impact on us, then yeah. our opportunity for growth is endless and i'm like man that voice is so present with me you yeah know? and it what what resonated with me and i, I haven't made this connection because i think i need to do the compliment stuff more you know i'm pretty good at daniel say i'm pretty good at like the whole thing of like tell people when they're doing something wrong i'm pretty good at that you know it's like ah. <laughs> that's easy <laughs> yeah yeah like that's my training you know yeah yeah <laughs> But I have the ability to do the other stuff. I just feel like ah, people don't want that. It's trivial, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, oh, maybe maybe that change in that relationship to that voice uh, is gonna allow me to actually lean more into that giving part, mm -hmm. you know? So that's where I was just thinking as you guys were talking, I was like, oh, yeah. that could be cool. Yeah. 
That's very great. insightful. Yeah, that's amazing. So I'm curious, how will you guys celebrate yourselves once this film comes to fruition? You'll probably see it on TMZ. Um, <laughs> Quite crazy. <laughs> With a long Perfect. sleep, probably. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, God, it's, it's so hard to know what it is, you know? I mean, there's a lesson in going, is there an end to this? Are we thinking there's an end to this? Right, you know? yeah. <laughs> well, milestones, you know, right? Is. You got to keep that? celebrating along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, I think that's a good reminder. I don't know how to remind ourselves to like have fun during this whole process. Like, yeah. but, but, you know, sometimes it's heads down, you yeah. know, trying to, trying to get it done and, and not like reminding ourselves this is, we're pretty lucky that this is yeah. what we do right now. Yeah, right. I'm, I, I, I love the TMZ quote, Dan. It sounds like fun. <laughs> we should make that a goal. It includes a boat. It includes, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. fire. I mean, I picture giving Dan a bit, like the biggest hug in the world. Aww. And Aww, uh, I'm sure we'll cry, frankly. You, this you'll just... need to try to find me because I will be <laughs> running as fast as I can. <laughs> Away? <laughs> I'm just gone there. long enough. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, yeah, and... Uh, I think that'll be a wonderful, wonderful thing to see it on the screen. Um, and then hopefully we'll talk about, you know, what we want to do next. Yeah, I mean, um, I've been here now so many times and cried, you know, and I'm just like, you know, sometimes it's just like, you know, it, I can imagine that's what it's going to be like. It's going to be a release of some sort. But yeah, what would be special about like how we uh, <laughs> connect at the end, too? Sorry. Oh, no. Those are all amazing things, but I still didn't hear how you're going to reward yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a hug from Dan, that's a reward. A hug? Okay, not you got a hug from sorry, sorry. a good hugger. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know his hug, so it must be a really good one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I think, I think, honestly, I'll probably go somewhere by myself into the woods and like, and have a real intentional experience. That sounds great. Sounds like a release. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I think I'll have to like sit with myself for a little bit and just be like, you know, you should be proud of yourself, kind of a thing. Yeah, beautiful. And, and I think that resonates with me too. I picture like a week away, just checking out. Yeah, yeah, having some fun, having some you know, intentional, ceremonial type stuff. Oh, <laughs> sounds great. With fireworks and boats. <laughs> And TMZ. <laughs> well, I can only control what I can control. <laughs> great, great words of wisdom there. <laughs> um, well, is there anything else you guys want to share uh, about the film or awareness where you're at? Anything else that's coming up? Chris has a really. I mean, one thing I. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> that's just what I do when I'm looking for the. Trying to organize my thoughts. Um, yeah. Uh, when it just kind of relates to the question you just asked about how we celebrate, and uh, and I really like what Dan said about like, well, you know, we it's a great practice to think, you know, that this is we're just going to stay in this perpetual state, and and on good days you can find the joy in that, and on the other days you're like, ooh, is this struggle? We worked with Rena Dutt, <clears throat> um, and she helped us create a film, create a short film called The Werewolf. Uh, and Dan talked about, and when we, we did, did get to show that at Maui, um, yeah. and Ram Das, who's a wonderful teacher, was there, and he had a documentary there before him, and then ours played right after, and so the crowd for the Ram Das film watched our film and got every joke, and it was just, <laughs> Dan and I were just like, oh, this is, um, and I was like, this could be the best it gets for us. Yeah, and that might have been our moment. Like, mm -hmm. you know, really, like to to have that, that sure. all that work right there, and people get it. Like we're hearing whispers in the back, and you know, not to not to pat ourselves on the back too much, but that was quite a celebration. You know, just That's like, a huge oh, celebration. It was really fun. It was yeah. really fun to feel people laughing uh, yeah. at the stuff, you know, that we wanted them to laugh at, and feeling the things that, feeling different things about it, but having feeling around it. 
That's beautiful. I I want to honor that celebration because that's very special. Yeah, that whole that whole time going to the Maui Film Festival was <clears throat> was pretty special. Yeah. So we went to a place and it was you know the, all the, the family and friends and you know close friends and uh, you know we were there with our short and you know if you're in Maui it's amazing to be in Hawaii you know it's kind of like a massage where you're like why am I not getting a massage twice a month you know it's like why am I not in Hawaii like twice a month yeah um, but yeah that was that was all pretty special it was pretty great and then the icing on the cake too was you know there's this actress uh, who Dan and I love. Um, Connie Britton, and she was there, uh, and she we saw her at the main party. She said, "I'm going to be at your short," and she came up to us after the she saw the short, and she said, "I want to be in your feature." Oh wow! And like well, we want you to be in our feature. <laughs> so if Connie's watching this, we really would love, <laughs> love to have you. We Call got them for you. Call them, Connie. They're so, ready. That's awesome. I think the stars are aligning because I I've run into her like a couple of times. Oh, randomly. And just been like, oh, uh, yeah, 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 our film. Yeah. <laughs> but, anyway. That's wonderful. I love that. I love yeah. that. I mean, you can feel how like the energy shifts when you talk about these celebrations, right? Like we were talking about a lot of challenge, and that's we got to honor that too. But when mm -hmm. we talk about these things that are uplifting, everyone's faces like get really bright. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, totally. yeah. 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 Thanks for. Thanks for moving us in that direction. Lisa. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I mean, we, I think we tend to get serious about it, you know, and it's like, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's good to peel back. Right. And like zoom out a bit and, and remember how much you've already done. So that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for bringing that. Yeah, for sure. Well, if there isn't anything else, this will conclude. Thank you so much for being here. So great. Thank to you. See you yeah so wonderful to see you yeah we're i'm I, we, we did want to say actually oh. um yeah i'm i'm i'll stop and take a breath because if we're gonna oh, use yeah. the recording yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. this transition of you know we interviewed you and uh you know dan and i were were you know hosting these this series and self-awareness conversations and self-awareness and we're so happy to see you here um, mm -hmm. taking that taking that role, um, and we couldn't be more excited to, to have you as a steward of this of this conversation for now mm -hmm. at this point. And you know, thank you so much for for jumping on board. And we hope it's fun and rewarding for you. Um, and we think it's just a wonderful, wonderful fit. So thank you so much. Aww, yeah, thank you. thank you. Well, thank you for seeing me and for allowing me to. To pass to passing the baton to me, and I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to be here. So thanks. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, until next time, I'm sure you'll be back. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's always it's always fun to talk to you. So let's do it more often. 